All right, the community development committee will come to order. Roll call, please. Alderman Turner. Here. Alderman Kirk. Alderman Florian. Present. Alderman Cedar. Present. Alderman Moisio. Here. All right. Uh, number two, uh, approval of minutes of the Fe April 15, 2019 special meeting of the former Judiciary Committee. Motion by Alderman Cedar, uh, second by Alderman uh, Turner. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Do we have any audience time on anything that is on the Community Development Committee agenda? Anybody from the audience want to talk? Okay. We have no old business. New business. Item A, motion to approve an ordinance author, or actually A, B, and C are all the same property, so people can understand that. Motion to approve an ordinance authorizing execution of an annexation agreement for 12709 and 12719 West Granville Avenue. Any uh, motion by Alderman Seeger, second by Alderman Turner. Any questions on that? This is somebody who actually wants to come into Waukegan and build a single family home and that they are going to occupy, correct? Correct. All right, good. Uh, roll call. Alderman Turner. Yes. Alderman Florian. Yes. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Moise. Aye, thank you. Item B, motion to approve an ordinance annexing certain territory into the city of Waukegan, namely 12709 and 12719 West Granville Avenue. Motion by Alderman Seeger, second by Alderman Turner. Any questions on the motion? Okay, uh, roll call, please. Alderman Turner? Yes. Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye, thank you. Item C, motion to approve zoning calendar number 2583, map amendment rezoning of 12709 and 12719 West Granville Avenue from CR Conservation Recreation to R2 single family resident pursuant to an annexation agreement. Motion by Alderman Seeger, second by Alderman Turner. Uh, roll call, please. Alderman Turner? Aye. Alderman Florian? Aye. We don't get to ask any questions. Yeah, that's uh -huh. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> okay. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> you didn't no, ask for that. Any, any uh, questions on the motion? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I, I realize if they're going to build a home on it, it has to be zoned residential, but I'm just curious about the process of changing it from CR, whatever it was, to residential, and do we have to have a certain amount of conservatory property in this, you know, any of that kind of stuff. I, I understand I'm new to all of this, so I'm just curious if there's any. Um, so the process when a property is annexed is it's automatically granted the conservation recreation um, zoning. Which, Even if it's a residential neighborhood. No matter or, what it is, anything that's annexed into the city automatically comes in as CR. Um, typically, it's right away that there's an intended use, and so then there's a zoning process. Um, that goes through the Planning and Zoning Commission, and that has already happened at their last meeting. The only thing related to the annexation that the Planning and Zoning Commission has jurisdiction over is the zoning. So they don't vote on the annexation or any of those things. Just is it appropriate to rezone this property from CR to R2 if the annexation agreement gets approved by city council? Okay. Um, and their vote on that was unanimously that it was appropriate to okay. zone it R2. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, motion by Alderman Seeger, second by Alderman Turner to see Alderman Kirkwood. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we'll call on, I, I'll meet it again. Motion to approve zoning calendar, 2583, map amendment of 12709 and 12719 West Granville Avenue from Sierra Conservation Recreation to R2 single family resident pursuant to an annexation agreement. I have a motion by uh, you had Seeger, Seeger and then Turner. And that was a, a good question, Alderman Florian. Thank you very much. Uh, roll call, roll. please. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Thank you very much. Welcome to Waukegan. Mm -hmm. Item D. Corporation Council. Uh, Mr. Durando will give us a presentation on liquor and gaming regulation. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Yep. So I wanted to briefly address the council 
tonight um, regarding the uh, current state of what the Waukegan liquor and video gaming ordinances allow. Um, and then it goes through some of the common issues that we see in those applications so you have a better understanding of how the ordinance is intended to work um, and some of the things that we might want to look at addressing in the future. First thing I wanted to go through is what the roles of each level of uh, elected officials are. Um, you'll notice that everybody who's an elected official in the city of Washington really does have some power in this ordinance. The mayor is the local liquor commissioner under state statute, which means that he has the power to grant a specific license. Um, you'll notice an asterisk that I'm going to come back to. Um, and then he also has the power to enforce the liquor code, which means he does all of the you know hearings, if there is somebody who's violating the liquor code, um, as well as, as any of the other enforcement powers under that act. You'll notice that I did put a, an asterisk under the power to grant a license, and that's because you as the city council have the actual power to create licenses. The way that the ordinance in Waukegan works, there are you know, a certain number of licenses, but every time you receive a new application, you consider that as a brand new increase in the number of total licenses. When a business closes, there's not a vacant license or a free license or an open license. That license simply disappears. It's pulled off the rolls automatically. So you as the city council review each of those applications and can create a specific license and direct the mayor as to whether or not he may issue it to a business once it meets the conditions required under that license. You also have the power and the responsibility of holding hearings on those applications. So you'll see tonight you've got a number of people who are requesting a license be created for them. It's your job to, to vet those applications to see whether or not it's one that you want to grant to someone. Third uh, elected official who's got some responsibilities under our ordinance is the city clerk who acts as the record keeper. It's her job to maintain those lists of licenses. As I said, there's never an open license so she has to create those licenses that you and the mayor approve uh, and grant, and then immediately remove those licenses from those businesses that have closed or been abandoned uh, or had their license revoked. Uh, you'll also note that the city clerk's office is the, the body that uh, receives the applications, make sure that they're complete materials when, they send, when she sends them up to you, uh, and then also processes all the renewals for them. As a side note, I put on the slide the State Liquor Commission. So a lot of, we get a lot of questions about, well, you've been granted a local license or you've been granted a state license, why don't I automatically get the other one? The state looks for the local license, um, but they only enforce the state law. So they will only grant a license once you've issued it and once they've met the requirements under the state law. They won't look to see whether or not they've met the requirements under the local ordinance. Um, I also note that this is the body that acts as the appellate court for uh, any enforcement actions uh, by the mayor. So what does the application process look like? Well, first, you're supposed to file a complete paper application with the city clerk's office. This contains a number of documents. Um, you'll see in some of those applications uh, that there's a number of things required from them, including uh, making sure that they've got a complete business plan, that they've got a floor plan for how their business is supposed to look once it's completed, uh, that, they've re that they have all the other necessary paperwork that's required under both the ordinance and the application uh, checklist. Once that's complete, once the clerk's office has all that documentation, the staff will review their applications in terms of making sure that a complete background check is done, that they are eligible under that background check. Uh, the location of the business, we'll talk about distance requirements a little bit later on, um, and that the, the documents are complete and they are in fact eligible to hold a license if the council were to grant them. Once that's done, the paperwork will be forwarded to the city council. You will hold a hearing on that, which means that you have the opportunity to review the applications, to hear from the applicants who are going to present to you, you know, what it is that they are intending to bring uh, to the city of Waukegan, and then also to allow the community to have a voice on, on those individual applications. You will then, as this committee, recommend that the full council vote on that. Full council will then vote on that, and then I, I combine these two, the state and local licenses will issue, and then I also again note 
licenses don't transfer, so when a licensee closes, the license is automatically removed from the rolls down by one license in the city. So that brings us quickly into the Video Gaming Act, or the video gaming regulation that the city has. Um, again, the state act is very narrow in terms of what your specific power is to regulate under uh, state law in terms of giving out uh, video gaming licenses. So once you've issued that liquor license, the poor license, uh, it becomes very difficult for us to do additional regulation. Um, you will note that you know we've put together a comprehensive and innovative uh, ordinance that tries to use the city's home rule powers to, to uh, increase those uh, powers to do reviews, um, including by having council review of those applications, by having distance separ separation requirements of 1,500 feet, um, but also providing waiver process. And I'm going to come back to this right after Alderman Newsom. I have a question regarding poor yes, license. Um, does wine fit into that, or is it just hard liquor? So, if so beer and wine is poor? Anytime that the, there's you know, a restaurant license or a on-site consumption license, I guess is the technical term for it, but anytime they're being served beer, wine, or hard liquor, any of those, they would qualify as having a poor license under, under the state act. Um, just sem simply selling at retail would be the, the separate category from that. Okay. So if I'm selling packaged liquor, not for consumption here, say I'm a gas station, that wouldn't qualify as a poor license. Okay. Is there a license, <clears throat> excuse me, a license management system where all these records kept manually in paper form? In paper? The city does not currently maintain any sort of Electronic license electronic database. system beyond what the city clerk's office Thank you. Guys. Okay. Um, and the city clerk's office does maintain an online list of those licenses. It's kept in, I think it's an Excel format and a PDF. So you can access it on the city clerk's website. Thank you. Alderman. Um, I've noticed in other communities now that grocery stores are now doing gaming. Does our licensing process in Waukegan allow that? I'm going to add the caveat. Generally, no, because again, they're required to either have a poor license, which means that they've got a bar in their uh, oh, business, you know, um, or they qualify under one of the other terms <coughs> in the license in the ordinance. So, you might have like what Thornton's has. You've got a truck stop. They sell enough diesel fuel to qualify under the state law to get a, a video gaming license, or you might have a fraternal organization that, you know, I can't even think of a good example that wouldn't have a poor license. But. I guess you have dovetail on that. Sunset Foods in Libertyville has a bar inside, and basically a restaurant. They're poor in liquor. They could they could put gaming in there if they wanted to. Right. Um, theoretically, you could have a Starbucks in a grocery store, and if they serve liquor, they got a liquor license, which they, some of them do, mm -hmm. then they technically could have it too. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I want to come back to what are distance separation requirements. Sorry if that answers your question, Alderman Florian. Um, the distance separation requirements in Waukegan is really twofold. It's first, you've got a 1,500 foot distance requirement, Dear which is Lord. supposed to you know, help with the proliferation of uh, video gaming in the city, but it provides for a waiver process, which means that they can come to the city council and much like the liquor ordinance, present to you a full application and explain how uh, video gaming fits into their business plan, and then you can consider that in terms of whether or not you want to grant a license to them. So you can, in fact, uh, have or grant waivers. <coughs> Generally, what we're trying to avoid here are the concentration of the gaming cafes, the Dotty, the Emma's, that we've seen a lot of come into the, the city in general. I really, really wanted to touch on, on a couple of charts that I made for you. Um, you'll note that these next two slides are very similar. The green one is the state law requirements, and the, the orange one is the city's requirements. You'll note that they're kind of convoluted and complex at times, and a lot of that's just because that's how the state law is written. You'll note that you know the distance from a school is measured from property line to property line, but for a church, it's from the closest point of the building to the closest point of the building. So a lot of 
when, when folks are coming to us, we're getting a lot of questions. Well, but the state law says I can do this here, but not here. And I'm going to come to a couple of examples here in a minute. But I do want you to understand a lot of these, even though there's, there's a whole bunch of rows and columns here, you'll note it really just mirrors what the state law is. And in fact, we've tried to make the, the Waukegan ordinance a lot simpler by generally measuring from property line to property line with a couple of exceptions. So the first example that I want to give you of this is an application that was received by Sunset House for a video game license. You'll note that I've drawn a 400 foot bubble around the specific walls of the, of the building where they're in. And you'll note that uh, the Waukegan Bible, or Baptist Bible Church uh, to the northwest there is within that 400 feet, so they cannot get a, a waiver. I also note that within that same strip mall, there is uh, another business that does have a video game license, Lady Luck. Um, they could ask the city council for a waiver from that, but it would be pointless because they're within uh, 400 feet of the church. Of the church. So is there, so is there a waiver process for state law? There is generally not, no. How did Lady Luck get a license then if they're in the same vicinity? Thank you. There's a couple of ways that that could have happened. One was that they are grandfathered in before the city uh, put into place its licensing requirements. The other possibility is given the length of that strip mall, it's possible that their door is actually 400 feet. Away. I really couldn't speak to that. I would also note uh, something that I didn't measure in this one, but could be an issue, is that Sunset House, if you measure property line to property line, might in fact be 400 feet from the school, which is that uh, sort of purple one up in the top left corner there. But what, what is the relevance of the distance from a church of a, for a school? When I go to a restaurant, I'm not at the church, and if I want to go over here, I'll walk across the street. So it was a legislative what? decision by the state legislature. I'm really not able to tell you why they, they chose to put those restrictions. I could hypothecate, but I don't think you want to hear me on that. Alderman? Yes, I have a question. You know, as I looked at this, uh, the Joaquin ordinance versus the state ordinance, we had a lot of confusing situation. And then I'm always in trouble. That ain't that new. More so than that. So when you go back to what the, the previous liquor code in the city was, it was actually even more than 400 feet. Um, what we had done is we had tried to negotiate um, legislatively a policy that, the city, that was acceptable to the city council at that time um, to create distance separation requirements. Again, their feelings on whether or not liquor should be served that close to a school or to a um, church um, or otherwise just try to, to reduce the proliferation of video gaming that they were seeing in the city. Does that help answer your question? Basically, it's a legislative decision that the city council could review. You could go down to 100 feet. That would certainly be within the power of the city council. But right now, the, the current ordinance says 400 feet. So that's what the city council at the time wanted to see. Dear Lord. But in refusing some of the requests that are coming before us, mm -hmm. some of those are being that's certainly the case. Okay. And in fact, my next example is a good example of that, where you've got Brown's Chicken who wants one. They're, under everybody's definition, ineligible. They can't get one under the local ordinance. They couldn't get one under the state ordinance, or the state law, because the state law requires that they have to be 100 feet away from school property, and they immediately abut a school, a school property. So. The third example I tried to use was one of simply just a, a neat waiver. Um, this one is uh, Masal, who I believe is actually here tonight. Um, they don't have a church or a school within 400 feet. Uh, their only issue is that about 250 or 300 feet away, uh, Thornton's gas station has a video gaming license. So they would be eligible under our ordinance to receive a waiver from the city council. Certainly. And then the, 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 uh, 
car is down in the old car dealership there. It's not, if you if you went front door to front door, it's probably two thousand feet. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's why I mean it it, it it gets very tricky when you go either <coughs> property line to property line, front door to front door, corner to corner. <coughs> I mean, it, it becomes it's it's almost like the tax code for crying out loud. You need the tax attorney to figure out. And certainly there are portions of the liquor code that read that way. Yeah. I would point out though that it actually, if you do measure it door to door, it's probably only about 300 feet this, between the two. Okay. So, right. not, not to correct you, but. Now maybe you might be right. I'm, just, I'm, in my, I'm gonna walk it off tonight. <laughs> no, it, it's really not. You can see in this third figure, the, the door is about there, um, and Hortons is there. Yeah. That's, that's, and the, the entire circle from the edge of the property is only yeah. 400 feet, so yeah. it's probably in that same vicinity. Um, the second type of issues that we see a lot of here in the city are after the license is issued, we've had uh, the most common enforcement issues, I guess this would be. Um, there's really three big categories of these. The first are generally zoning requirements. So somebody who's got a banquet hall or a nightclub has to get a conditional use permit through our zoning ordinance. Um, I specifically highlight uh, nightclubs here because it's sort of one of those things that a lot of people think about when they think about uh, liquor. Uh, in order to car cover a, or have a covered charge or to have uh, live music, live DJs, third party promoters having events at your place, you actually do have to get a conditional use permit from the city of Waukegan. Um, there's only one of these licenses that I'm aware of in town, and that's the Red Iguana. The which? The Red Iguana. Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. They've, they've got a nightclub license. The one, uh, the old, uh, the pool hall. No, no, no. Used to be a pool what hall, about right? the old, uh, the Alderman Taylor suggests it might be square. square. The one, used to be the old country place. Saloon. Yeah, that's not no, the Saloon. No, 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 not anymore. Red Iguana. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, I know where one is. Well, I'm thinking of the one that's out there on Fountain Square, the old service merchandise. That was a country bar. That had that didn't help it. I was curious. Yeah. So that, as far as I know, that's the only one in the city. There might be another that I'm unaware of. Okay. Noel can correct that's me at some point in the future. I thought about that in a minute. Man. The other two uh, major categories that we see a lot of enforcement actions start are folks who are not paying their municipal food and beverage tax. You know that the city of Waukegan has a home rule one percent sales tax on, on food. Um, a lot of folks forget to remit that because that comes to the city and not to the Department of Revenue. Um, so make sure that your applicants are, are filing for that tax. And then the third big category here are the, what I call the security concerns. These are the kind of good neighbory kind of issues that you have. Everybody understands that when you have a bar, there are gonna be fights, there are going to be problems from time to time, but it's really about how does that bar respond to those problems. And so a lot of times you'll see bars who have hired just the guy off the street to act as their bouncer, as opposed to hiring somebody who's state licensed and bonded as a security agency. You'll see uh, bars ask their patrons not to call 911 if there is a fight that breaks out. Um, all of those kinds of things really could impact their, their liquor license, and those are common issues that we would want to uh, look at enforcement against. How many like? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> because I have a few of those right in the neighborhood in my right ward. Um, how many times are they allowed to have police come to their establishment before they are so, fined or yeah. something happens to them? There's not a hard and fast rule on that, either under ordinance or under any sort of administrative rule that the city has. Um, it's generally treated on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you know, there's a shooting there, then what, do they lose their license? It, it generally, and, you know, again, it's, it's simply a case-by-case -case basis. It looks at a lot of how did the bar respond? How was the bar implicated by the behavior? You know, um, I can think of bars who have had shootings in their parking lot here in Waukegan mm -hmm. where, you know, it was something natural that occurred out of just a neighborhood dispute wasn't related to any conduct of anybody in the bar, coming out of the bar, the way the bar handled it, they called 911 right away. The, bar's, the bar doesn't deserve a fine, you know, and so under those set of circumstances, they are probably not going to 
be subject to an administrative uh, action. Um, on the other hand, we've had ones where the bar's uh, proprietors are specifically involved in the conduct. They are aware that a fight's brewing in the bar. They don't do anything about it. In fact, they tell the patrons, don't call the cops. Like, we don't want anything to come out of this. Those are the kinds of places that we want to hit them with a stiff penalty or, or look at suspending their license for a time because we really do want to encourage people to call for help when it's needed. Mm -hmm. So there isn't a hard rule. It's not like three times uh, that the police show up at your establishment will trigger something. Yet, how did the bar respond in each of those instances? What actions are they taking across the board to try to respond to that? You know, are they recognizing that they have a problem? Are they now putting in security cameras? Are they hiring licensed and bonded security? Are they working with Waukegan PD to try to address those? Those are all factors that we would consider. I mean, all the news have been up for an equal amount of time. You've heard me say, if you can't run your business, you don't need to be in business. And we have, we, and I've talked to the mayor at that many times about putting the hammer on people that we can't have the police department getting emptied out to go deal with a bar fight every Friday and Saturday night. Because um, we, we have plenty of bars in Waukegan that they never have to call it, but it's never an issue. Um, so, uh, and the mayor knows my feelings on that. I simple saying, if you can't run your business, you don't need to be in business. But, but how many licenses does a business huh? need? Like you're running a bar, and you're selling food, and you got liquor, and gambling, and music, and dancing, and a sign, and I mean, Jesus Christ, man. How many licenses does it take to? Business uh, license, liquor license. <laughs> now, the liquor license would be depending on what classification. If you're in the nightclub, then so there's yeah, only a business one. license, a sign license, a liquor license, a uh, gambling license, uh, play music at no, night no, license. No, the, 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 mu the, the music license, would, the music and all that would be kind of under the nightclub. Which is yeah, only one, point. one. Yeah, all these we, we do have some places my, my, my that try to point, skirt that. My point here is this is an observation. I know yeah. it's not gonna change anything, but I just it's my observation that man, government has grown to be way too intrusive. We talk about being business friendly. You got a small business like that opening up, you need eight line licenses and special police. Oh like, Jesus Christ. When does the uh, citizen and our business owner get a break? And think about it in this context. The business only provides you uh, us money right gives us dollars cash for something of value what do they get in return in, in, of value right if i buy a car I give money i get a car something in return of value you know in the case of a business they don't get anything of value all they get is a piece of paper that says permission granted they get to run their business. yeah that's what i'm saying Com permission granted we give you permission if it wasn't the government doing it, it was a guy a group of guys and gals doing it it would be extortion i don't like it well Too they much get government. they get paid if they weren't making money, they wouldn't have a business. Exactly. So they're so they getting some money from it. That's right. Their money is, they're entitled to their money, right? Well, That's just should. my I'm observation. I've got I'm a like question. Like Officer Moisey, hey, handle your business right. All the same. Yes, sir. Uh, how many times can we pull their license? Is there a limit on that? Well, I mean, there's, there's a couple of different ways to look at it. So, I mean, in terms of enforcement actions, generally what we try to do is we try to step up the enforcement. So the first time they might be hit with a very small fine, they might be hit with a temporary suspension. We then work our way up to a revocation depending on the severity of the incident. A lot of that comes out of the state, the way the state treats those uh, cases. So like the uh, Illinois uh, Liquor Control Commission will expect to see that we've, that we've taken a couple of steps before we jump right to revocation. Uh, Thank you, sir. You can't. You really can't jump from, you know, not having an issue to revoking a license, without running into some prob obstacles. Due process. But in terms of having a procedure in place here at the council, what I'm hearing, we don't have that in place. So maybe th there may be two incidents, one incident, three incidents, before Again, we revoke or suspend for a temporary amount of time? Right, that, that power actually rests in the, the local liquor commissioners, so the, it's generally the mayor or the, the hearing officer who's making those determinations after a review by the city's prosecutors and uh, various staff. So I mean, we will generally, when we receive a, a report from the police department about, say, a bar fight, it'll be reviewed by the clerk's office, who then sends it over to my office. We review it, decide whether or not the bar's actions are warranted and then we'll take prosecutorial action if it's necessary. 
So it's, it's not that you don't have a policy, it's that you don't want to have a really hard and fast rule, because that'll also encourage more bars to say, well, we don't want to call the police. You know, because the police were already out here two times this last month. We don't want to have them out a third time, even though if they had had them out that third time, they could have prevented the double murder that happened as a result of that. And I, I think to answer your question, I also want to bring it back to, to my final slide, which is the importance of properly vetting these applicants. Because I really want to, to highlight the second point, and then, I'm, then I promise I'll take whatever final questions you have. Once we issue the license, it is very, very, very difficult to take it away. It, it's treated as though it's a property like, right? So even if they're abusing the conditions of the license, even if they're abusing the public's trust, even if they're having issues with their neighbors, we still have to go through a whole series of hearings, uh, appeals and processes that can take a very long time in order to get any sort of results. So it's better that you fully vet these applicants at the very outset of this see which ones you think are going to, to be good neighbors who have a vested interest in the community and grant them licenses and maybe hold people who aren't good neighbors to a higher standard. So with that, I'll open it to any final questions. I did put a link to both of our ordinances there. You're also welcome to email or call me at any point. I have a question. Um, when, when you make reference to um, the, the licenses and, and how the, it's very difficult um, to, to revoke them. Um, you're referring to both the video and the liquor? Both of them require specific uh, hearings, full due process hearings okay. in order to, to go through that. With specifically liquor, I think is more difficult than video gaming. Um, even though if you're going after one, you're likely going after both. And that's because the State Liquor Commission requires uh, that, that sort of stepped up enforcement where you show that you've, that you've taken some remedial action before jumping right to the revocation. Can the city revoke a video license? You, you, you would revoke the local the, video gaming license, yes. You'd have to have cause. <laughs> but you would have to go through the full due process here and you would have to show a good reason for removing that license. And I want to also note, I don't know that I necessarily hit this point on the last one, even if you want to not renew somebody's license, you still have to hold that full due process hearing. It's not like I can just say, well, we've had issues with them, let's not renew it at the end of the year. You have to bring them back and have that full hearing. Alderman Taylor from the audience. Um, what is the coverage of Yeah, yeah. There was a restaurant in there before, correct? No, it's, it, it, there's, it's, Marisol is new. There's one next to it. The Iki guy, Susie, is next to it. Okay, and they do have a liquor license, correct? They do, but they took out their gaming. Okay. At least last time I checked, they had one, they have a liquor license, yeah. they had gaming, they took the gaming out and expanded their dining room. Okay. So that was their that was a, that was their own choice. Yeah. I don't know if it, I don't think I don't think they got it back, but I think they took it out, yeah. So are they asking I don't know what the agenda, are they asking for liquor or gaming tonight? Marisol is asking for they have a they have a liquor gaming. license. They're asking for a gaming one. Anybody else? Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Councilor Durando. All right. Uh, with that being said, uh, E, request for new liquor license at the Canarcia y Fruteria El Mexicano at 2765 Washington Street. That, Waukegan, Illinois, obviously, 60085. That is actually a grocery store. So I don't want people to think it's just a fruit mart. It's a grocery store. They just want a liquor, a package liquor license. Correct, uh, count, uh, clerk? Oh, I didn't hear you. A package liquor license at the group. Yeah, package. Okay. Yes. Uh, do we need it? Alder Mosio? Yes. I'd like to uh, make a motion that we do this as ombudsman. The well, we can. Instead of going through all of these? That's going to be. Uh, yeah, it's going to be hard to do it here. All right, well, okay. let's uh, move quickly. Well, no. uh, do we need, to, first of all, just to spare everybody's time, do we need to hear from any of these people? Does anybody want to hear from the applicants for this? This is just package liquor. Right. I, I thought that these were just hearings. Yeah. And that's what they were they were not going to be voted on because they are not? They're not being voted on, but this is an opportunity to present the business plan. Okay. Okay. So, so nothing is voting. Okay. 
We're not going to vote on this? No. Oh. No, oh. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. So we're going to vote it here. Yeah, but it's not going to be the But this is the only opportunity to have them. To have them? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, all right. Did we, do we want to hear from these people? It doesn't matter. What? Submitting is pleasure. Excuse me. To, yeah. be, to be clear, what we're looking for, Doug and I are looking for, is just direction on whether you want us to prepare ordinances oh, yeah, yeah. for the for this council to consider in two weeks or a month or whatever. Obviously, if we approve it here at the committee, it's going to go to the council, and then we'll it'll go from there. I, yeah, right. Correct. All right. All right. So you need a motion on these. Right? Well, do we, do we, but first of all, do we want to hear from the people at the food market? Okay. The mic's all yours, sir. Go ahead. business plan and uh, on the store because the customers come and ask buy the groceries <coughs> and they buy ask for the liquor or beer spoil. Okay. So I, I pretend complete the order or groceries to the to the customer or the neighbors. Mm -hmm. okay. That's what the reason apply to the liquor store. Okay. I mean that's a beer. I don't okay. want the liquor, just beer and, you okay. know when the customers come in and it asks for beer or something like that, but not, not nobody asks for liquor or wine. I just want beer. beer. Just beer. Right. Yeah, to complete to the old groceries. And Correct. I okay. get it. And that's all right. Any questions? Yes, all too. Yeah, no, 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 no. I don't got deliveries. So when I, when I saw, no, no, don't make deliveries. Okay. Motion oh. to approve. All right. Motion by Alderman uh, Turner, second by Alderman Seeger. Roll call, please. Alderman Turner? Aye. Alderman Kirkwood? Aye. Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye, thank you very much. Item F, request for a new liquor license at Jack's Pizza and Burgers, 1000 North Green Bay Road, Waukegan, always 6085. Is anybody from Jack's here? All right, go ahead. I think we all know where Jack's is. We know yeah. restaurant. We're just, trying, we're just trying to apply for the you know, liquor license. We have customers who come in and they ask if we have beer. I have to tell them, no, we don't. And they all talk and they said, we, so we're just trying to generate some more revenue. Gotcha. Have people come out for sporting events. We do a lot of parties and gatherings. We can't serve anything to the customers. So we're just gotcha. trying to get some beer and wine in there, or whatever license we can apply for. Okay. Go with that. Okay. Got it. You're not going to put any beer in the soup, are you? Because yeah, I, so I love that soup. Perfect, right? <laughs> all right. I love that soup. Um, <laughs> any more questions? <laughs> uh, Motion by Alderman Turner, second by Alderman Seeger. Roll call, please. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Thank you. Thank Item you. G. Request for a new liquor license, Lucky Food, 38 North Genesee Street, Waukegan, Illinois, 6085. This, they had one right. before, and all clerk, what you said, it lapsed or something happened, and so they had a liquor they license. They had a liquor license downtown. This gentleman bought it, and then it, it lapsed that year. Okay. So now he's coming back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't. I, 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 do we need to? We can. He's a restaurant. We understand that, and he wants to be able to serve liquor at his restaurant. Yes. Correct? Correct. Pretty, pretty simple. Correct. Um, also, because of the language. language sure. Um, one of the other things that they are asking for or requesting. What, excuse me, what, what's your name now? Hi, my name is Maggie, okay. and I work with Excel Entertainment. We're a terminal operator, mm -hmm. and we're working with Lucky Food to hopefully that if they can get a liquor license, that they can also apply for gaming as well. Mm -hmm. um, what we're requesting this evening is because there is another establishment tap room right next to them, that it's within the 1,500 feet if we can request um, you know, a waiver for that ordinance so that they would be able to apply for the gaming. Because mm. the, the, the thing we have here is just for a liquor license. Liquor We'd have to go that first. Correct. And yeah. then the rest of that stuff would have to come back later. So this would just be for a liquor license. Yeah. And then we would take, we would have to take up the gaming and the, the, um, the distance requirement um, waiver at a different time. So this would, this vote would be just for liquor. And again, he had it before, so. Um, All right. I do have, if I, if I may, because when we would come back the next time for gaming, I do have his business plan and everything with the gaming layout. 
would you like this now to take, keep with you or bring it back at another time? That's up to the committee, the alderman up here. I don't need one right now, but no. if you okay. don't want it, you're more than welcome to give it to them. No. Any alderman want it? You can give it to them. I don't need it right now. I'll just okay. lose it. I'll, I'll, yeah. Let okay. me get it closer to the date. Okay. All right. Motion by Alderman uh, Turner, second by Alderman Seeger. Roll call, please. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye, thank you. H. Thank you. You're welcome. New existing liquor license requesting gaming license from Marisol Mexican 554 North Green Bay Road, Waukegan, Illinois 6085. This is, should actually be a waiver, correct? Counselor, it doesn't say waiver, but it should say waiver because it's, as Douglas so eloquently described, <laughs> so it's both. Okay. Do you need to b vote on them as separate? No, separate it'd be, it's. What would be the motion? Well, hold on. We'd like to hear from these people first. Okay. Go ahead. The floor is yours. Hi, my name is George. I'm the sales manager of the AV company. I'm trying to help with the Okay. So this is fine. George, speak into the mic, please. This is 554 North Green Bay Road. <coughs> They're just a, they have a valid on-premise liquor license, and they just want to apply for the gaming license. Oh. And that's why we're here. We've been working Oh, on existing liquor plan. license request. Oh, I, 554. I, I can't read, sorry. They have a valid liquor license. Right. Okay. And next door no longer has gaming. Well, they owned the building for 15 years, and now they've owned the new business for two years. I'm trying to picture that. Where, where is that? What's next door? What's the other Ikigai business? Ikigai Sushi. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's across the street from Classic. Yeah. Across from Classic. Got it. Got it. Thank you. And that's really about it. I just need the sure. license to compete and uh, want to grow and build a business. And we'll help them with a lot of marketing. I mean, that's what the gaming companies do for the establishment owners. Yeah. Ooh, All right. Question? Yes. Uh, questions? Right here. Oh, Alderman Taylor. So, if the restaurant next door had gaming, wouldn't they have been under the same thing of the? 15 Thor they had it before Thorns was even built. Oh. And so, I'll call for a vote on this. We'll vote how we vo how we vote. Um, I, I don't know if the new Alderman know my pit, my. Uh, opinion on the distance requirement, I think it's arbitrary. Um, and again, it, I mean, look, if you know where Classic Chevrolet is and you know where Thornton is, yeah. that's a big distance. But because of property lines, it falls within having to give them a waiver. That's the problem I have with uh, a distance requirement for uh, gaming. Mm. Um, as the previous council, we wrestled with, we want to regulate it. How do we regulate it? Well, we came up with distance because it was something we could do. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We this new council will have to wrangle with how they want to regulate it. I don't. I don't. I, like I said, I don't think distance is a good way to regulate it. But right now, it's all we have in the book. So if somebody comes up, they have to get a waiver. Is so, all them for you. In this particular case, though, isn't it true that if say you measured the furthest south on their property? And the furthest north on uh, Thornton's, you would still be within the 1,500 feet. You, you might be. I don't know. I mean, it's a long way away. 1,500 yeah. feet is like three blocks. It's it's that's well, yeah, it's 500 yards. It's oh, hold not. On. Yeah, yes, I don't sir. think it is. I just wanted to add something. And I've been with gaming since day one, um, and I'm very familiar with uh, state regulation. We meet with the IGB agents, and they're very specific about the measurements for OTBs, churches. And Schools. It's corner of the building to, to the uh, corner of the next building yeah. in terms of the measurement. And it's a straight line. I run my wheel on it for the IGB. Right. I'm a broker also. Yeah. yeah. So that's as specific as the state's been. Sounds like Waukegan is. In We're all over the place. Yeah. So how far is it in this case? I have, I have my wheel in my car and I'm measuring time. You'll have a hard time if it's a four lane highway coming across there. So you are not calling out the police. Yeah, doing it night. <laughs> so I mean it, again, I don't everybody has their own opinion. I I would like some regulation on gaming. I don't think distance is the right way to do it. But that's me. 
Um, with that, I'll call for the vote. Uh, motion by Alderman Turner, second by Alderman Cedar. Roll call, please. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Florian. Nay. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Thank you. Item Aye. I, request for liquor license and gaming license, Rockies Place, 2243 North Lewis Avenue, Waukegan, Illinois, 60085. That's the old Taqueria Guadalajara. Guerrero. Sorry. Oh, I don't want to get in trouble. That's right there by uh, Caesars and Planet Fitness and across from oh, Pineville. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, we have, yes, go ahead, ma'am. My name is Anna Marie DeLeo. I'm the owner of Chestnut Ridge Group, which is uh, Rocky's Place, and we also have a couple other restaurants. We have restaurants in Elmhurst, um, Illinois, Oak, um, Orland Park, and on the west side, or south side of the city, and uh, Morgan Park. And this concept would be a hot dog stand. Chicago style hot dog stand. Um, if you look at our Orland Park and Morgan Park locations, it is called Joey's Red Hot. This would be a similar concept um, at the old Taqueria Guerrero. It's a standalone building. We think it's perfect. It fits our uh, our plans. We usually put. It seems like an old style Chicago um, hot dog stand. We serve hot dogs, hamburgers. Everything includes French fries. It's cheap, affordable prices. We usually have red and yellow, Vienna beef colored all over. So it's a, it's a fun family atmosphere. Um, this location will be called Rocky's Place, which is expanding on another brand that we've deviated off of. But we also have five um, food trucks that we run in the neighborhoods in the south. We'd like to expand that up north as well. Um, but we'd also like the video gaming to help you know, with the cost because um, we try and keep our food at 265 a hot dog, which includes fries. So if we can keep our costs low by supplementing with video gaming um, and having you know beers available like Portillo's, if you go, you get a hot dog and a beer for the family, for parents, the kids get a hot dog or chicken tenders. Um, and the video gaming would help supplement costs and our prices. So we've applied, I, I was here last time um, answering questions, I'm happy to answer any questions you have as well. Um, our Elmhurst location has been in business for 30 years and we've been growing ever since, so. What, this? Any questions? Any yes, Alden Taylor. Was this one that we discussed last time? Because they came for us, there was no, there's nothing around there. There's no. nothing, nope, there's not, there's, this is not a waiver. And why did it, why did it I don't so remember. We yeah. pushed back because of the new council coming in, so oh. we wanted to reach Yeah, but th th there's no disparate waiver on this one, so. Motion by Alderman Turner, second by Alderman Kirkwood. Any, mo any, any more? Uh, Questions? Roll call, please. Alderman Turner? Aye. Alderman Kirkwood? Aye. Alderman Florian? Nay. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Item J, motion to approve vendor contracts for grass cutting and debris removal for vacant and abandoned properties. Um, we got a grant from, am I saying, Ida? Yeah. Uh, $250,000 to take care of grass cutting of abandoned properties. Um, we've also used this grant in the past to take down abandoned properties. Um, any of the aldermen up here would know, I don't know if you, the new aldermen, if you've gotten calls about abandoned properties and grass. Yeah. Uh, but this is what we would use. We would send out, we have some contractors we would send out, they would cut it, they, they would send us the bill. If there's a detailed description of what it would be in the, in the notes, we pay them, we get reimbursed from Ida, um, and we also lien the property. Is that Ida, I-D-A? Illinois Department of? It's I-H-D-A, Illinois Housing and Development Authority. Thank you. So it's a good, it, it helps. It really helps because, I mean, it, you know, we've all gotten, I hope we're, we all gotten calls about oh, yeah. property and grass two feet tall. Yeah, I'm actually going to cut some of it myself. We've done that too. Yeah. So <laughs> this, is a, this is a little bit of a strategy, one way to, once the 250's gone, it's gone. Yeah. Yes, um, uh, So you say that uh, we get reimbursed uh, the cost, mm -hmm. and, and then we also put a lien on the property? We do. For the cost? Correct. Okay, so we're kind of like double dipping there? Well, the lien is probably, no, 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 no. no. We, no we, we, the contractor cuts so we pay for the service to the contract. Okay. Right? But since we did that, we lien, they, the property owner that owes us money, basically, because we cut their grass. Because sure. it's not usually abandoned property. I bank should. owned or bank yeah, owned so her. we're going after the bank because they didn't pay to have the grass cut 
There's nothing abandoned in the United States. Somebody owns it somewhere. Oh, no, 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 no. I totally understand yeah. that. I just, you know, I, I, I hear that we're getting reimbursed for, for the... Uh, for the process, and then we're also on the back end putting a lien on the property for the same amount. So where does okay. that money go then? Is that what you're trying to oh, when I we get it reimbursed from the lien? Maybe I don't explain it well enough. Go ahead. Sure. And uh, building commissioner, feel free to come up if I don't explain well enough. Um, so we pay the contractor. We're reimbursed from the grant. We put the lien on the property. If we collect on that lien, then that revenue goes back into our fund that we can continue to use to cut other grass and deal with derelict properties. And what's the rate, do you have any ratio? Like do we get it back 60% of the time? Do we get it back 20% um, of the time? I don't know for sure. I would say we're lucky if it's 10. Oh, it's not. Yeah. It's, it's rare. Not, yeah, it's Especially oftentimes these are foreclosed, foreclosed properties and a lot of times on foreclosures, a lot of those liens get waived as well. That's right, yeah. Tax sales. That's the kind of lien where if we have a redevelopment opportunity on the project, it's easy for us to say that having the property back in, in good use is a bigger benefit than collecting on that lien. So that's the kind of lien that's you know easy to waive $75, $150 here or there. That's not actually. Versus having the property remain vacant because the buyer wants to back out due to liens. Mm -hmm. Hey, you mentioned, uh, uh, <clears throat> You mentioned something about uh, that grant being available to use for demolition. Of we property. have used it in the past for demolition. That grant or a separate grant? That's the same grant. We have used it in the past for demolition to take down buildings that need to I come like down. It. I like it. Right. Yeah. yeah, I'm good with it's it. It's a nice grant that really helps us out. It's obviously not enough. I wish it was a million, but yeah, you know, but it, it helps. It does. This is the fourth year that we're receiving that grant, and, and each year we've gotten the maximum amount of two hundred fifty thousand. And how do those properties that get their, how do they end up on the list? Who decides? Who decides what properties get their grass cut and by whom? How does that, how does that Alderman Turner, I got a property over here with two foot of grass. Can you please call somebody and get this taken care of? Exactly. You call Mike, yeah. Mr. Right. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Patel. I got yeah. it. Mr. Patel. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. put it on the list. Thank you, Alderman Turner. Yeah. That's what it's basically, it's, they have to be abandoned, vacant properties where they're not being taken care of by the banks and whoever else might be the owner. So every time I cut some of that grass, I get reimbursed? Put a lien on it. Go to small claims court. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. All right, motion by Alderman Turner, second by uh, Alderman Seeger. Any more questions? Roll call, please. Alderman Turner? Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Thank you very much. Uh, motion by Alderman Seeger. Well, just a quick reminder: we're, none of this is going to be voted on today on the council floor. It was a snafu, I guess. So. Including the yeah, we can't vote on the grant either, right? Uh huh. Right. But again, we get reimbursed, so we can still do the work and then get reimbursed. I'm sure you have some properties, Alderman Taylor. I do. Okay. Uh, motion by Alderman Seeger, second by Alderman Kirkwood to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you.